transfers, recruitment, squad building. For me, it's the single biggest difference maker in an FM save. If you can get that right, then the rest will follow the trophies, the success and everything that comes with it. Today, I'm going to show you the transfer techniques that I use in my own saves that help me to dominate the transfer market. No, I don't think I can get away with the word dominate either. In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can sign players like this for prices as low as this, as well as selling players who get opening offers like this one for final sale prices like this. I've got five methods or techniques that I use in my saves all the time that help me to maximize my efficiency in the transfer market. And I think they can help you too. Some of them you might know, some of them you might not. I'm going to save the best one until the end of the video. So, so don't leave. Let's get into the first one. Oh, before we do, please, sorry, let me interrupt just to say thank you for all the support recently. Please subscribe to the channel. We are so, so close to 60,000 subscribers. That's the aim to so please subscribe to the channel, especially if you find this video helpful today. And if you do find it helpful, maybe leave a like on it as well. Let's get into that first method. All right. So the first transfer method I'd like to share with you is a technique that I call the never never method and it's a method that utilizes the installment system in the game now disclaimer here it's probably definitely not the most sensible way of approaching your transfers in football manager but it is insanely effective i'm going to show you why it's so effective and i suppose i should mention as well if this is not for you then i sort of understand that if this type of exploity type of approach is not for you and you love to moan about these things then fair enough i understand it play the game in the way that you want to play the game i'm going to show you it anyway because it's so effective and it is it is in the game that I'm going to share it with you, but use it at your own risk, right? I understand. This is how it works and why it's so overpowered, potentially. I have loaded up this Newcastle save that I'm playing at the moment, and I have targeted Jarrell Hato as a new player to bring in. He is transfer, well, his transfer value at Ajax is 46 to 65 million pounds, but I don't want to spend that all at once because I want to go and buy loads of other players as well. I've got loads of money to spend, but I don't want to spend huge chunks of it right now. Instead, I want to spend small amounts on lots of players. And then hopefully all of having all of these really good players will mean that I go and win things and get loads more money in the future too. That's what I'm kind of banking on here by using my installments. Now with this value being 46 to 65, in fact, I'm going to check that by talking to his agent, 44 to 67. I want to make sure that I'm getting value in this transfer, but also I don't want to spend more than about half of his value. So I don't want to spend more than 25 million pounds in this particular window. So I'm going to semi lock in 25 million pounds and then I'm going to utilize my installment system and my yearly installments to see just how I can break this down so that I don't spend all of my money now. Instead, I stack it. So I spend it all in the future. Now, I know what you're thinking, you're probably thinking, well, how is this any different to spending the money now? Do you really want to have those bills coming in later in the save? My argument being that I use this method because my argument is if I can bring the player in now, I will make my team better now. And if my team is better now, we will make more money in turn, making all the money back and having bigger transfer budgets in the future anyway. Does that kind of make sense? I'm investing in my future now because I know that I'll be able to afford it later on. If you if you played many FM saves, you know that later on in the saves, if I break this down in these installments two two installments, three installments, one installment, the reason this is so overpowered is that actually these 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 amounts of money that you're spending don't come out of your budget until 2029 30 and if in five years time i'm not winning champions leagues then i've done something wrong and i'm probably not going to be the manager at newcastle anymore anyway and if i'm winning champions leagues i should be able to afford the money that i'm going to put into this transfer does that make sense this is the key thing to keep an eye on when it comes to installments you stack the amount of money you spend meaning you don't just push it forward a year in advance I'm going to go five years into the future before I'm spending this money. And now if I break it down to you, I will show you. I want to put the biggest amounts of money furthest away into the future so that I spend it. I don't mind spending a lump sum in 2029 because as I mentioned, I'm hopefully going to be a really, really rich team by then. I mean, it's Newcastle. They're already rich. But in your saves, you should be able to bank on the fact that you're going to make that money in the future. And yes, there is risk involved in this. I think it's a risk that's worth taking. I'm going to spend 20 million there, which gets us 
The potential value of this is now £45 million. Pounds. I'm going to then see if I can spread out the other amounts by putting lower amounts at the start because it does matter which order you load these in. It will change the way that this comes up so that you could have it so that you spend your one payment at the start and then spread out the further payments. I like to put the biggest payment like so far in the future because it kind of works. This is now £60 million, pounds, which would be right about in the middle of his transfer value range. They usually ask for towards the top of the transfer value range, but I'm only going to spend £25 million on him right now. And I think that's value for a player that's 18 years old that's going to have a bigger value in the future too. Will they accept this for what is a transfer is a, that's about half price, except for really far in the future where I spend the money? They will. And that, my friends, is the never, never method. Use it at your peril. Use it with risk involved, but pretty OP these stacked installments, right? Let's move on to the next one. The next method is a classic and it is to try and force your transfer target to submit a transfer request at their current club. Now, it, this is a little bit hit and miss, but I have been able to make it work recently. So I'm going to show you the methods that I used to make them hand in the transfer request. So the player that I was targeting was Purvis Estupinian from Brighton and eventually he handed in a transfer request as you can see on the screen here. To make him do so, let me show you what I did to do that. And again, I don't think it happens all the time. It may depend on the player's personality and their ambition and the context between the two clubs. So we're Newcastle, we're in the Champions League. He's more likely to push for a move to us because Brighton didn't qualify for the Champions League, etc. But it's something worth exploring in your saves. If it becomes viable, it can be useful because it can bring the price down on the player that you're trying to sign. The way that I managed to make Purvis Estupinian hand in that transfer request was to go to his profile and declare interest in him. I did make him my top target in the press and then did this little interview with the press here saying we are now interested in them. And if you, although at the moment, I think he's just signed a new contract in this particular save file, but this is what I did anyway to make him request that transfer. I told the press that he was my number one target. I also went to his profile and made sure that one of my staff members was following him around, well, everywhere, basically. Let's send the director of football to follow him for four matches, going to all of his friendly matches. He was there the whole time, and this was what helped with him putting in that transfer request, as well as finally, the last thing was being that I went to my captain, in this case here it's Kieran Trippier, and asked him by discussing to promote the club to the top target, which is Estupinian here. He will then go and do a little interview too. And finally, the main thing that you want to do if you want this target to hand in that transfer request is to submit a bid for them. Now, this might seem a little bit counterintuitive. Why are you bidding for them if you want them to submit that transfer request? Well, I'm going to submit an offer that I know is going to be rejected. And this, in turn, can sometimes annoy the player so that they're like, they're annoyed that they're not allowed to pursue a move to Newcastle in this case. And that then can trigger them submitting that transfer request. It's not going to happen in this save here because he's just signed a new contract. I think he actually signed a contract on this day in this. Yeah, he has. He's literally signed it today in this save file. But in the save that I did on, on stream, he, uh, this managed to work and we managed to get him to submit the transfer request. And we got him for about £40 million with future installments too, which if I ask for how much he's going to be costing here, it's going to be way more than that. 42 to 62. So we did get a deal on him because of that transfer request that he submitted. So try it in your save, see if it works for you. That's my second method. Let's have a look at the next one. The third transfer method that I use on occasion is something that I call the bait and switch. And in essence, this is where you have a player that you're struggling to sell, struggling to get offers for. So instead of offering them out for a transfer, you can offer them out for a loan. And then very often from there, you will get some teams make a loan offer, which you can then change to a transfer offer. Here's a clip of me doing this with Harvey Barnes in one of our live streams to show you that it can actually work. But yeah, let's have a think about DM. We could just go get Jao Neves actually for the midfield spot. It just means using Bruno more as the DM more. Change to transfer. We can try. I don't think they're going to go for it. Rafael Luis. I'll have a look at him, James. Manu Kone, love him. I don't know if he's a massive upgrade, though. Right, it's super cheap. But I don't think that's the end of the world. The penultimate transfer method that I want to share with you is sometimes used in conjunction with my final transfer method that I'm going to get onto in a second. But I like to call it the old dangle and bait. These names, 
They're not great, are they? However, let's go back to our good friend, Sean Longstaff here, who we're struggling to get those transfer bids for. His value is between 6.4 and 8.6 million pounds. Nobody is bidding for him when I'm offering him out for that amount of money. Right now, he does have interested teams, or at least a interested team in Wolves here, but then as of yet, not made a bid. The way that you can sometimes get people and maybe tempt teams to come and bid for your players is to offer them out for a really low amount. I'm going to offer him out for £2.5 million. And I'm, there's no way that I'm going to accept a bit of £2.5 million. But I'm going to offer him out so that hopefully some teams come in. And in a, a perfect world here, we can even play them off against one another. But let's first of all see if we can just try and trigger some interest in him by offering him out for a super low amount. And then going forward a few days and seeing if those bids come in. And here we go. It does look like we have got some bids for our good friend, Sean Longstaff here. And they are at that £2.5 million amount. Now, at this stage, I would be thinking to myself, I'm not going to accept anything that isn't near to his transfer value, especially when you can go and do the old loan bait and switch as we did before, which actually does work. We got a bit of £7.5 million there. But what I would be doing after this point is going through each of these bids and seeing if you can negotiate them anywhere near that £7.5 million mark. And if you do get a bid, then you've managed to do the old dangle and bait, which is one of the transfer methods I use. However, I want to stop at this point to move through to my final transfer method, which is perhaps the most powerful of all the transfer methods that we have seen in today's video, both the, the methods where we try and buy players and the methods where we try and sell players. It's another method where we try to sell players, and I call it the auction method. It's something we use all the time on streams and it's where you get yourself a situation like this and you play these teams off against one another and you can make them go crazy. They lose their minds and start bidding outrageous amounts of money. So I'm going to see if I can make it work with Sean Longstaff. And there are some clips from other auctions that I've managed to achieve that could be put in the video if this, if this one is a struggle. Again, with all of these things, they don't always work, but most of the time the auction one does work. Let's see if we can move from £2.5 million to try and get near his transfer value, which we know was between 6.4 and 8 point something million pounds. If we can get to 7.5, I'd be very happy here. And this is how the auction method works. The first thing that you want to do is choose one of your teams to accept. And yes, that sounds weird because it's 2.5 million pounds and you don't really want to accept. However, we're going to hope that we can then go and reject it when other teams come back. What I'm going to go and do is accept the top one just because it's Southampton and he really does want to join Southampton. So I don't want, I, I do want to sell him and I want Southampton to come back afterwards. So I'm going to accept that one and I'm going to go ahead and reject every other bid that is on Sean Longstaff here. Now with those rejected and no other transfers being active, he will start speaking to Southampton. However, I'm going to hope that all of those other teams that are now interested in him are going to come back by turning it into an auction. I'm going to try and keep it quite incremental at the start. And now I'm going to ask for three million pounds by offering him out once again. I'm going to lock this in because I do want them all to offer on the money, money without any installments and things. It seems cleaner and it seems to work better. I'm going to keep him transfer listed him and then offer him out again. And hopefully some of those teams, including who are they? They're Wolves, Nice, Fiorentina and Osasuna come back in for him. And do you know what? I'm going to actually just, let's we try it here with, we've got a bid for Dan Byrne as well. So I'm going to try it with Dan Byrne just to see if we can get other teams to come in for him. And maybe we get some more footage of an auction in, in progress there. So I'm going to accept seven mil for Dan Byrne. And just as we're doing long stuff, I'm going to offer out Dan Byrne at four. Let's try eight million pounds and see if a team comes in for him there. And just maybe we'll get two auctions on the go at the same time, which is so exciting. Let's go through to the next day. We've offered out Dan Byrne for eight million pounds and Sean Longstaff for three million pounds. Will we get an auction with these two? Okay, we do have more bids now and we have got the auction in full flow. Now, Sean Longstaff, we've got a long way to go with him to get near that 7.5 million pounds mark, but this is how it now works. Oh, we've actually got a Saudi team in there as well, which is always, that should be a transfer method in itself. Can we get Saudi teams to offer silly money? I'm going to actually accept the Saudi offer here and then reject everybody else because I don't want him to speak to these teams now and agree a transfer. And importantly, I do now need to go to his bid here from Southampton at 2.5 million pounds and reject that one. Should we try and be a bit cheeky now? The next thing you need to do is offer him out again. Let's try 4 million pounds. And the, the secret to this is to do it incrementally. If you try and now offer 7.5, 
you will often find that they don't come in for that type of money. So do it incrementally. They just keep going because there's so many teams interested in. They try and one up one another and you can get it quite high. As we do this, we are also doing it with Dan Burn, which was seven million pounds to start with. Let's accept Leicester at eight million pounds, reject the other two and offer him out again. Let's try. Let's try nine million pounds for him again. Incremental upgrades. Hope the auction continues. We've still got a few teams involved in this. So let's continue again. Maybe even the next day. Yeah, the next day we do have more of those bids. And you've got a fully fledged auction on the cards here. Dan Burn is now £9 million. So I'm going to accept West Ham's on this one. Reject the other two on there. Make sure I go to the transfer page or the transfer tab here. And reject that lower offer of £8 million from... It was Leicester, wasn't it? Offer him out now. Can we get £10 million? He started at... He started at £7 million. If we can get up to £14 million, pounds, that'd be good. Double his price, which would be nice. Let's try £10 million for now. Go back to Longstaff and we are going to accept one of these bids. Let's go Southampton again because he does want to move there, doesn't he? Reject the Saudi offer. Reject all of these other offers at £4 million as well. And then hopefully, let's get it to £5 million for the next one. Still got a bit of a way to go with him to try and get this 7.5, but let's try £5 million next not be too greedy, not get those teams to walk away. See if we go one more continue, if we continue our auctions. I hope so. I, I, I genuinely think this is one of the most fun things you can do in the game. You, you just see your money going up and up and up, which is always nice, isn't it? When you get a sale that is actually anywhere near their value. Dan Burns talking to West Ham. I assume that Longstaff is talking to whichever team I accepted just then. I'm hoping that when we come back on this day here, we have more bids, which we do, which is always very nice. Let's go to Longstaff. We are now up to £5 million for Longstaff. We're getting towards that 7.5, which, which is what we were aiming for. Reject the other bids here. Go back to his page uh, down here on this tab too. Reject the £4 million. We started at £2.5 million by doing that, that baity low offer. And then we're just negotiating it all the way up if we can. £6 million is now going to be the offer well, when we're offering offering him out we've got 10 million pound bids for dan burn now from leicester and the saudi team al kadza i'm going to accept the al kadza bid reject leicester reject west ham at 9 million pounds and i'm going to ask for 11 million pounds hopefully you're seeing the method now and if this isn't something you do in your saves seriously this isn't like this is just playing the playing clubs off off against one another and it just works so well I'm just going to continue with with ignoring those other offers there. I want to get to 14 million pounds for Dan Byrne and 7.5 million pounds for Sean Longstaff just to show you the that you can actually really really increase these offers by doing this method and taking your time, being patient and getting there. There are the extra offers here. We're up to 11 million pounds for Dan Byrne. I'm going to accept let's accept West Ham this time. Why not? The auction continues. Just going to do long staffs as well, which is now £6 million. Pounds. I'm going to do Southampton again. Make sure you reject all of those other bids. Make sure you reject those. And then also always go into the transfer tab here and reject the lower offer that has been accepted already. Stop them from talking to those teams and then offer them out at the next amount. I'm just going to check the next amount is £12 million pounds for Dan Byrne. We'd be a bit cheeky because I think you can see that the auction method works. Let's try 13, which is £2 million more. And it is being a bit cheeky, but this could maybe be a good way to show you that actually, if you try and be too greedy, it can sometimes upset the uh, the clubs that are offering. Long stuff, I'm not going to be greedy because I do want to get that £7.5 million. Pounds. Let's go to seven and offer him out there. See if we get that bid for Dan Byrne. I hope we do actually, and it goes up twice. It can. It's just a bit of a, of a, of a risk really. We do get the bids. We've got £13 million pounds now for Dan Byrne. I'm going to accept the Saudi bid, reject the Leicester one. We have got £7 million now for Sean Longstaff. Reject Osasuna there. Let's go and reject those lower offers of £11 million. So £2 million was the update upgrade on that one, which is nice. I'm going to go now. You know what? If we get above the 7.5, that's even better, isn't it? So let's try 8 for Sean Longstaff. Let's go for Dan Byrne and try... Can we try £15 million? Remember, the initial bid was £7 million from the first team. Offered here. In fact, I forgot to transfer list there. Make sure you do that. Make sure you do lock it in as well. It is important. Let's continue. And I think we would leave it here if this is successful. You could continue for as long as you possibly can. We do have those bids. 15 million pounds. And interestingly, it's just Leicester now 
This might be because the other teams are pulling out. Remember, there was a team that is still has an accepted bid, though. So you still might want to try again after this, and it doesn't hurt to try again. And if you try too high and no one bids, try a little bit lower, and it, you can sometimes tempt them back in just as a tip. I'm going to accept here. £15 million for Dan Byrne. We've got £8 million for Sean Longstaff. We could have gone a bit higher, but I feel like you understand the auction method. That is the end of our transfer techniques video. Go and dominate that transfer market. Hopefully you found this interesting. Hopefully you found it helpful. If you did, leave a like on the video. If you want to see more content, let me know what you want to see in the comments down below. What types of tips and tricks do you want me to share with you? And uh, hopefully we'll go and make that video. Thank you for being here. Subscribe to the channel. But most importantly, everybody... Have a lovely rest of your day. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.